Hey folks, and welcome back to Math I at Home. I'm Megan, and today we're going to be making some field notebooks filled with leaf rubbings. Summer is the perfect time of year to go outside and learn a lot about plants. Everything's in bloom, so it's really easy to practice your plant identification and learn more about all the species out here. But I know for a fact that it's really hard to recall everything once you've learned it. So a field notebook, or a nature notebook, is a really good way to record all of your findings and store them all in one place. Not only are they great to store all of your findings, but they're really easy to make too. So today we're going to make some nature notebooks, and I'm going to show you how to make leaf rubbings and plant observations, as well as some quick field sketches to fill your field notebooks. This craft really won't take many materials. Really all we'll need is paper, a hole puncher, some ribbon or string, some pencils, and some crayons. I think it's really helpful when doing leaf rubbings to have the crayons have their wrapping stripped off, so I would recommend doing that. We're also going to need something sturdy just to write or draw on if you're going to be making these notebooks out in the field like me. So I'm gonna use a handy dandy cookbook. <laughs> So to make our notebook, first we're just going to need to gather a few pages that are going to make up the paper of our notebook. This can be as many as you want, but don't worry if you don't get enough because you can always add more later. Once you have your stack of paper ready, we're going to need our hole puncher. So because I'm using full sheets of printer paper, I'm going to make three hole punches down each page and then I'll use these to bind the pages together. But if you're using a smaller piece of paper, you might only need one hole punch in the corner or two along the top and bottom corners. It's completely up to you. Then we need to cut long pieces of ribbon for each hole in our stack of papers. So since I am using three holes, I'm gonna cut three long stretches of ribbon. It's probably longer than I need, but I don't wanna have too little. So I'm gonna start off with longer and then cut it shorter. You'll want to wind through your ribbon through each hole that lines up in your stack of paper, just like this. And then once the ribbon is through each hole, you wanna tie both of your ends in a bow like you would tie your shoelaces. And then like I show here, you can cut off the extra ribbon on each side. Do this for each hole in your stack and then you'll have a notebook. Feel free to decorate your cover however you want to. If you find yourself running out of paper at any point in time, you can always just make a second notebook or you can undo the bows on your ribbons and add another few pages onto the end. And now we're ready to head out onto the field and fill our notebooks up with some plant facts and rubbings. So the first thing I want to show you is how to add some plant rubbings into your notebook. So let's head out onto the trails and find a couple plants that we want to add into our notebook and then I'll show you how to do some leaf rubbings. As always, we want to be super careful about looking out for plants that might irritate us like poison ivy or cow parsnip. So one of the trees that I saw right away and I'm really excited to do a leaf rubbing of is our tulip tree here. The tulip tree is one of my favorite Michigan trees, mostly because of its really cool leaf shape. The bark also has a really cool texture too. It's unlike the bark of many trees. You'll also notice when you look for tulip trees that if they're a mature tree, it's probably one of the largest trees in the forest like this one here. Tulip trees love light, so they grow up really fast and straight, and it's one of their most characteristic features. While I was out on the trails, I also found a white pine tree. If you didn't know, white pine was our state tree here in Michigan, so of course I had to include this in my notebook. To me, white pine is also one of the easiest coniferous trees to recognize because of its characteristic five needles in each bundle, like you can see here. It also grows its branches in perfect circles each year. As you can see on its trunk, there are concentric rings of branches all the way up the trunk. And so you can use this to actually tell how old a white pine tree is. I'm really glad that Michigan has such a cool state tree. So to do your leaf rubbing, you wanna place your leaf in between your paper and your hard backing. For me, this is my cookbook. Run your crayon along the paper where the leaf or needles are underneath and you should see distinctive markings emerge where the leaf has most definition. And this is how you transfer the image of your leaf directly onto the paper. Now that our notebooks are filled with these beautiful leaf rubbings, we can also fill them up with facts and observations about the plants that we've included. This way, our notebooks can be a place to store all of the incredible information that we learn about our plants through observations, books, and videos. And whenever you want to try to remember what you learned about these plants, you can just revisit your field notebook. So the plants that I saw on the trail today and did leaf rubbings are, are the white pine tree and the tulip tree. So I'm going to try to find as much information as I can about these trees and put it all on these pages. Something I think is super important to include first on these pages are observations about the plant itself. I may try to highlight the venation, which are the veins or these lines and ridges running through the leaves. 
that help deliver nutrients and water throughout the whole plant, as well as maybe noticing any coloration in the bark or leaves, maybe spotting. You may also notice other animals or plants living on this plant. So lots of trees have ants or aphids that like to live on the leaves, and many might also have vines running up the edge. Just be careful not to touch these because it actually might be poison ivy. Or maybe I noticed that some of the leaves look eaten. There's holes missing in the leaves, even though I don't see any insects on them. You may see birds' nests or squirrels or even moss and lichen on the bark of your tree. These are all things that tell us really important information about the tree and how it lives. And so they're really important to write down. It's also pretty important to observe the environment that the tree exists in. Is it living along the bank of a river or lake? Or is it in the middle of a forest and you have no idea if there's a nearby water source? What is the weather usually like in this area? Does it rain a lot? Or has it been really sunny for a long time? These are all really important factors for plants and tell us a lot about how this species survives and lives in the world. And so that means that they're also really important for us to consider when we're trying to learn about plants and understand them. Once you've taken down some very careful observations of your plants, then we can try to learn more facts about them possibly from outside sources as well. The internet can be a pretty good way to learn about plant species. Places like Wikipedia actually have lots of information about plants that are really easy to access. You can also usually find books at your local library or bookstore that include lots of information about plant identification, how they live, and where they can be found. We also have some incredible and super informative videos that showcase deep dives into specific plants here on our Math I YouTube page, created by our incredible docents. They're also really great to learn more about plants on the trails and in the conservatories. Find facts that interest you about your plant and make you curious about more, even if it's not directly about the plant itself, but rather about the animals and insects or other plants that may use your plant as home or shelter. And fill up the pages of your notebook however you want. Something else that you'll probably observe during your time out in the field are critters. Squirrels, bunnies, and many bird species populate our forests and prairies here in Michigan and they're so adorable. If you're able to get a good look at or a picture of one of these critters, they're really fun to include a quick sketch in your notebook and whatever observations you can make about them. If they're moving a bit too fast, but you're able to tell what kind of creature it is you're looking at, you can always look up a picture as well and use that as a reference to make a sketch. And then I fill the page with information about the species that I've observed or found online, just like I did with my plants. As you continue to explore your environment, be sure to bring your notebook with you so that you're ready to add observations and facts to it whenever you need to on the go. You can add plant rubbings, sketches, and observations as you find them so that you never miss a piece of information. So by now, you're already an ecologist. I hope you all enjoyed learning how to make a field notebook with me today. What is your favorite plant that you've learned about so far? And what plants do you still hope to learn more about? And always remember, if you wanna see more incredible trees and critters out on the trails to study, come visit us here at Mathai Botanical Gardens. It is the perfect place to fill up your notebook with leaf rubbings. I hope that you come to visit soon. Bye.